So this week's portion is the portion of Vayeshev, and the portion opens up like this. Vayeshev Yaakov Beretz Megur Avi Beretz Canaan, that Yaakov settles in the land of his fathers, in the land of Canaan. And the next verse is, Eilat told us Yaakov Yosef, this is the chronicles of the descendants of Yaakov, and it goes on to explain and to elaborate on the story of Yosef, of Joseph. So there's a contrast there because the Torah starts off by Yeshiv Yaakov, the Yaakov settles, which represents Isyashva settling quietness. And then the next story is this very dramatic story where some of the brothers, most of the brothers, sell their younger brother into slavery. Whether they actually sold him or wanted to sell them, intended to sell them, but he was sold into slavery, something that's very dramatic. And the great contrast. So the Medrash says on this that Bikesh Yaakov Leisha Beshalva, Yaakov at his older years went through so much and at some point in time he said, you know what, I want to sit in peace. I just want a peaceful life. I went through so much drama in my life. I want to sit now and just reap the rewards. And the Torah says, but no, the next thing happens is this great event with Yosef. So let's see what the Zohar says on that. The Zohar says like this, that Vayeshev Yaakov Beshalva Yaakov kama savul bishin al bishin tader, that Yaakov constantly is suffering, one suffering after the next suffering, and um, he he said he wants to settle and he wants to be in peace, and that is only achieved at the end of his life. So what we see is like this, and the Zohar goes on to explain this idea at length, that there is in life there is cause and effect. Every time we do an action, there is a reaction. But there's sometimes a separation between the action and the reaction. And the separation is time. Let's say a person does something. And we'll say that every time you do something, you put something out into the universe, you'll reap its effects for positive and then for negative. In the world of pure judgment, in the world of din, if the world was created through din, judgment, then if a person would steal, God forbid, their hand would fall off. Action reaction. A person would do kindness, a person would give charity, automatically they would become wealthy. Action, reaction. However, shituf midas arachimim, there's a mixing besides the idea of din, of judgment, there's also an aspect of compassion, which allows a person to do a certain action, and because the reaction is over a longer period of time, maybe a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the line, or maybe even next life, therefore it allows the person to possibility when they do something negative to transform themselves and put something out, do a certain action, and then over a longer period of time say, you know what, what I've done in the past I'm, is regretful. I really wish I hadn't done it. Do a process of tshuva and say, I completely transform myself, and now I can change the trajectory of that past action. So the world was created with a balance between strict judgment, which is action and reaction, and a measure of compassion which allows the action and the reaction to be separated from each other over a longer period of time. But every action has a reaction. So when it says in the Torah, Yaakov, Eretz Megura, of Yaakov wished and desired to settle. What Yaakov wished is that he should receive his rewards immediately. He put out all this action into this world. He was now waiting to receive the reward, to reap the rewards of his action. However, because of the element of compassion that was introduced into the universe, which allows a separation, we see time that separates from our past into our future. If we eliminate time, then there is no separation between the action and the reaction. But when we live in a consciousness where there's a separation of time, where the past, present, into the future, that creates a separation between the past and the future. That's a positive thing. That's a positive thing because then we know for certain that our action has a reaction, but we learn the art of being patient. So you do something and you say, but where's my reaction? Wait, just wait. If you don't see it today, you'll see it tomorrow. But every action will have a reaction. This is, the, this is what the Torah is trying to teach us, and according to the Zohar, this is what the Torah is trying to teach us in this week's portion, the art of learning to be patient and to wait to see the results. This is also reflected also in the month, the consciousness of the month, which is connected with the Sagittarius, which is Keshus, which is a bow, which is you pull back an arrow, and then the, the arrow flies. So when you pull it back, 
there's a process of you go further in one direction, then it goes in the other direction further. That's cause and effect. But you only see the effect when the arrow hits its location. So there's a process of the state between the pulling it back and releasing the arrow, and when the arrow finally re gets its place. That's the idea of action and reaction, but the, the point is to learn the art of being patient. And this is what we also see in this week's portion with regards to Yosef. Joseph, the great the story of the narrative of this portion is dealing with Yosef. Yosef is sold into slavery, and he has a dream. And his dream is that he will become king in some form, and he's not really certain of what. He's sold into slavery, and he does finally become the Grand Vizier, or becomes second in command in the, in the entire Egypt, which is the great superpower of the ancient world. The question that everyone asks is, how come Yosef doesn't send a messenger to his father to say he's alive? He loves his father. His father loves him. Why does he send a message to say that, hi, I'm alive, I'm now the king, or second, the king in Egypt? Why doesn't he do this? Why doesn't he go tell his brothers that he's alive? And the only time he reveals himself, and finally when he reveals himself, is only when his brothers prostrate themselves in front of him, and, he's, and he sees that the, the fulfillment of that prophecy, of that dream, does he say, oh, now I can tell you that I'm alive. Why? Because Yosef receives information via a dream. He's not a prophet, at least in the first levels of his life. He's not a prophet in a way that he sees things clearly. He sees a dream, and a dream is a metaphor, and he's uncertain. He's a bala chalomis. He's the man of the dream. He's uncertain which part of the dreams, when would they be fulfilled, and how would they be fulfilled. So when his dream is being fulfilled, he doesn't want to mess things up. He wants to be patient, and he wants to wait for the dream to be completed. When he finally learns that, the art of being patient in his life, action and the reaction is finally at the end of his life or a later period in his life when he sees the fulfillment of his dream then he says I'm Yosef and where's my father and that's the art of learning to be patient and to see the results of your action over a longer period of time